Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Markajan here. Today's video is gonna be on minerals. Why are my minerals so low? We're gonna dive into that topic. Before you do, please smash that like button. Really appreciate it. it, helps the search algorithm. Put your comments down below. Let me know your experience with low minerals, what symptoms you had, really curious to know uh, what is happening. All right, so let's dive in. Minerals, what are the big minerals we're talking about when we talk about minerals? So we have things like sodium and chloride, which are gonna be common like in your really good uh, Celtic or Redmond's real salt, right? Sodium chloride, a lot of different trace minerals as well. And then we have your, I would say these minerals are long forgotten when it comes to electrolytes. We tend to not get enough. Uh, magnesium and potassium. Now, out of magnesium and potassium, people in the functional medicine community are pretty hip with, with magnesium. They're on top of that. They're like, okay, I get my magnesium before bed, doing that. Helps with motility, helps with relaxation. Potassium is the long forgotten um, mineral or electrolyte, if you will. There's also calcium in there. Calcium is usually not the big one when it comes to like cramping or muscle issues. It's always, it's, if you're sweating a lot, of course, sodium and chloride is a big one, but then potassium and magnesium are going to be the really big ones. According to the CDC, 50% of the population is magnesium deficient. If you're eating lots of refined carbohydrates and processed sugar, the Krebs cycle due to uh, metabolism and processing glucose and sugar, it's gonna use up lots of magnesium and B vitamins in handling lots of sugar. So the more processed sugar you have, guess what? There's an expensive transaction fee in using magnesium to help deal with the ATP as that Krebs cycle um, puts around and produces NADH and FADH too. So that's a, a big thing to keep in mind there. Stress will cause you to burn up magnesium because magnesium is, is a buffer of stress. It relaxes the heart. It helps with motility. There's over two to 300 enzymatic reactions in the body. It's gonna help with blood pressure. It's gonna help with brain inflammation. Yes, Dr. Blaylock talked about giving his brain surgery patients magnesium and they heal faster than other patients in his practice getting similar procedures. So magnesium is very helpful with brain inflammation, very helpful with sleep. Sleep's important because that, that kind of like triggers a lot of regeneration. And of course, magnesium is also really important a cofactor in blood sugar. As we talked about earlier, if you don't have enough magnesium, then you're not gonna be able to process the sugar and the carbohydrates that you're eating as well. So magnesium is really important on that front. Potassium, another big one, right? Need about 4,500 to 4,700 milligrams a day according to the DRI, the, the daily recommended intake. Potassium is a big one. It's hard to get enough of it. When I say think of a food that has potassium in it, I guarantee you, if I, if I say think of a, a high potassium food, you're probably going to say bananas, right? Well, guess what? Avocados are twice as high in potassium than bananas are. So rechange that banana to an avocado. Avocados are great sources of potassium. If you're doing lots of exercise and you need the extra glucose, um, coconut water is wonderful for potassium as well. But most people are not getting enough. And so the first things I look to are, you know, good clean minerals in our water, like a Redmond's Re Real Salt or a Celtic. Those are wonderful. But then I'm thinking magnesium and potassium. And so the best food sources are going to be your leafy greens, avocados, fish, uh, beef, mushrooms, uh, coconut water if you're doing more exercise, but these are really important minerals. Now, when you're stressed and you have chronic adrenal issues, guess what happens? When you have high levels of cortisol or cortisol surges, you will dump a lot of potassium out to deal with and buffer the high levels of cortisol. So if you're like, hey, I'm getting enough, let's say I take my food, I run it through chronometer, which is an application that will tell you how much micronutrients you are getting, which is wonderful to see. Um, it'll tell you, and if you are under stress, you may have enough on chronometer. You may get that 4,500 to 5,000 milligrams a day, but guess what? With the stress that you're under, you may be dumping a lot of the minerals in your urine because you're buffering out stress. You're buffering out inflammation, inflammatory compounds, stress. Um, the cortisol is just really high because it's helping to buffer inflammation in your environment, and your body's going to use that potassium to kind of help buffer that out. So keep that in mind when you're stressed especially if you're under a lot of um, physical stress too, getting extra potassium and magnesium is only gonna be helpful for your nervous system and for your body to be able to relax and repair. Uh, of course, telltale signs, any cramping or muscular performance issues, get that going out of the gates with the potassium for sure. And then of course, if you're having any issues with heart rhythm, heart palpitation issues, that's another big one. Um, eye fasciculations, little eye twitching, Right, pretty common if you don't get good sleep or you stay up most of the night and you like, let's say you're not sleeping at all, you may start to notice a little bit of eye twitching. That's a common sign that the stress of not getting good sleep may have depleted some of your minerals and you really gotta increase the mag and the potassium out of the gates. 
So again, this is Dr. J here. Hope you enjoyed this podcast. Potassium, magnesium, and your electrolytes are commonly missed, commonly ignored. Uh, the best way to assess and test this is one, <clears throat> run it through a food log like chronometer. You can go to justinhealth.com slash chronometer, C-R-O-N-O-M-E-T-E-R. I'll put a link down below. You can sign up. It's free. Take a look at your food intake in magnesium and potassium. That way, magnesium usually around 500 to 1,000 milligrams, depending on what kind of magnesium you're getting matters. If you're getting like magnesium malate or glycinate in a supplement form, you need less than if you're getting like an oxide or a citrate. So it just depends on the kind of magnesium. But usually if you're doing um, somewhere between half a gram and a gram of magnesium, you're probably okay. So on that note, just to kind of highlight potassium, magnesium, I have a product called Potassium Synergy that I use. It's 10 to 1 ratio of potassium to magnesium. It's about 1,200 milligrams of potassium to 120 milligrams of magnesium. That's a good one when people are really low on the potassium. Potassium tends to have a bad rap. I think part of its connection with the lethal injection to stop the heart People just, they don't use it in supplements, usually over 99 milligrams, 100 milligrams. That's the highest you usually see it. You don't see it high at all. And so it's hard to get therapeutic doses of potassium. So Potassium Synergy is the product I recommend that I, I personally use and formulated. Put the link down below if you want to support the channel. Feel free and grab that there. And then outside of that, I would just say test your magnesium by actually making sure you're getting enough. You can add magnesium, see if your symptoms go away. There's red blood cell potassium testing that you can do. You want to be in the top half of the reference range. Red blood cells better. There's potassium serum that you can do on a typical metabolic profile. And that may not be great just because it's a serum test. Now, if your sodium's really, really low, guess what happens? The natural ratio of sodium to potassium. So your potassium may actually look high on a metabolic profile. It may not be though. It may just be the sodium is so low. Once you balance that out, you'll probably find your potassium looks okay now. But again, if you're just basing off of a metabolic profile, which is you know usually a commonly ordered test by your physician, it may not be enough to tell you. If it's really severe, it will, but it may not be enough. And then of course, if you go into an ER and they give you a lactated ring or some kind of electrolyte on an IV and you feel better, you know it's an electrolyte thing. But usually at that point, if you're dehydrated, low water, it could be all four electrolytes. It could be everything, right? And so when it comes to potassium and magnesium, usually if you're still pretty well hydrated and then you're still having these heart, muscle, nerve kind of things, then we definitely go to the other major electrolytes, potassium, magnesium. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed today's podcast. If you did, click down below. There'll be a link here. Um, if you want to reach out to myself or my colleagues, we're available worldwide to kind of help support you guys on the functional medicine root cause solution support. We're here for you. Feel free and reach out if you want me to be a part of your healthcare team. Outside of that, give me a thumbs up. Appreciate it. Put your comments below and feel free and share this with friends and family that could benefit. Let me see if I have any quick questions I can answer before I jump out. All right. I will try to hit questions that are pertinent to this topic if possible. Good. I think we hit all the major ones out of the great, out of the gate here. This is perfect. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs up. Appreciate it. Comments below. Take care, y'all.